Good evening, welcome. It's a very informal evening here at Roadside. Relax, enjoy a night that's going to be centered around music, motors, a few bikes, little magic, a lot of M's on there, but it's a night to be enjoyed. I would say to all the, the current customers of Roadside, to any potential new ones of Roadside, avail of the facilities, see what's on offer, see what exists up here in Riverside Park, and also avail of the food that Roadside have very kindly put on down there by Barry Dallet from the Crana. Always does the food here and it's always top class. Listen, I would see an awful lot of bike people in here and I would see another few people that perhaps maybe wants to see a bit of magic as well. I personally think that Roadside have put together tonight two of the best people at their profession in this country. Not two of the best, I would say the two best uh, at their professions in the country. But without further ado, I'm going to call upon the man whose vision and whose initiative put this all together with the help of the team at Roadside, and it is a team, it's a team effort, but the man behind the whole thing is going to, only, going to come up and, and do his own welcome. Uh, and without further ado, please show your appreciation for the owner and the principal of Roadside Garages, Davy Boyd. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of everyone here at Roadside, uh, as Dave says, it is a team effort, this. Uh, no one can do it on their own. Uh, so I would just like to kick things off this evening by saying a huge welcome to all our customers, old and new. For coming along uh, on a nice night, but it's a Thursday night, so it's during the week. Um, it pains me to, to say that tonight's not, not all about cars, but it's not all about cars, as Liam said. It's about uh, magic, motors, and mischief. Uh, I've no doubt it's going to be a good night. I was talking to Michael upstairs earlier on, and um, he came upstairs so he went to where Rob, Rob was sitting, and uh, he knew by the look of his face he didn't believe in the magic at all. But within 10 minutes, he wasn't just saying it was fantastic, he was saying it was magical. So, without further ado, uh, I'll hand you over to Liam, Michael and Rod. Uh, and uh, I know that you're going to have a, a, good, entertain, a good entertaining evening, uh, followed by some music from uh, Stephen Galt and his band Fragmented, I think. Uh, so, have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks David, and obviously this area in Balamone in particular is obviously a mecca for road racing, we all know that, so many road racing people and it's a great sport despite what some little attention seekers sometimes come out and say, but it's a great sport, we all love it. I'd have to say that David and the roadside team fully support this man as well. Uh, I am probably a bit biased, but even if I took that hat off, I'd have to say that the guy we're going to bring up now is without doubt, in my mind, the best in the world at pure road racing. And I don't think, and the facts stack, stack up and, and, and speak for themselves, I don't think anybody in this room tonight would dispute it. He's only 27 years of age uh, and he has a life of the sport ahead of him. But he's here tonight, first and foremost, to talk us through the first sub-17 minute lap of the famous Isle of Man TT and who other and who better to achieve that lap than the one and only Michael Dunlop. Obviously the lap takes just less than 17 minutes Keep your hair on. I have mine on. <laughs> Wally, hang on to the arms of that armchair you're sitting in. This could be a rough ride, but Michael will talk us through it. I'll have a wee bit of a chat with him because obviously uh, there's almost 17 minutes to fill, but it's an incredible lap. Uh, I'll shut up and let us get on with it, and Michael will start to talk us through it. This year, in the month of June, this took place. Yeah, I think this, this is actually the second lap, Neymar. 
the second half of the first sort of big race because I've caught Bruce in it very quickly. I think he had a bit of a spell, but it's down through seven innings. We're doing about 195 down through here. Uh, if you'll hear, I can do a bottom of very flat, but I've had to roll off because we've been stuck in just a wee bit of traffic. But now, two laps in, obviously, and you're trying to eat away at about the lap time. We're just trying to get on that sub 17 because that's where the lap time was. To The best thing is, yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a lunge here, I think, maybe, and try and push in here to try and get turned back. Yeah, and then we run it out because it's the slowest part of the track, but you just lose two or three seconds there without, without a doubt, you know. Back up into fourth gear up into Braddon, back to second, doing, still doing over 100 miles an hour into here. Big problem in here, first lap to cold tyres, left, that's your first left, real left you get into, so same again, we're working our way towards Kurt Michael. Uh, sorry, we're, we're working our way into Union Mills. There's a flat right here, or flat left, flat right, so you just need to watch here because they spin up over here and wheeling. Uh, as you can, it's hard when the cameras, because the camera moves with the fern, so the fern doesn't actually show at all, but third gear here, there's a bit of a dump in the road here. You do a jump over here, nip into third, head up now towards what they call Balascari. Same again, nicking up into fifth, sixth gear up in, same again, 190, touching 200 up through here. Obviously there's not a big room for error, so you have to make sure you're you're using all of the road in and all the road coming back out again. When are you aware, at what stage would you be aware of the fact that you're on a really quick lap or do they all seem the same at that speed, Michael? I know that the difference is minicule, but are you, uh, have you the idea you're on a real flyer? Yes, it's like again, you get stuck in you know, the race head today and you only push as hard as you think you're able to, you know, and you come into, when you get in through here and you start doing this flat through here, which is when you get in somewhere that got flat and you just hit your apex, you know you're on a a, a pretty steady run, you know, it's it's hard in your own mind to get, you think you're going hard sometimes, you're maybe not, and you maybe don't think you're going hard, you actually are going hard, but when you start catching riders on the road, you obviously know that there's, uh, you're on something, and obviously you're watching your pit boards at the same time. Uh, where, where's your first board at? I got my first board out, uh, this is Greba Castle, and you go in here into fourth, just out of Greba Bridge, I get it, you sort of clip here, hit left, hit right, and then you run to the bank here, still doing 150 down through that there, and obviously the, Biggest problem is it looks wide there, but you've only got small bits to get the apex. Yeah, I'm in fifth through here, and that's you know 170 mile hour to try and pull a bike from left to right all the time. It's it's a lot of work, but I get my first board coming out here, which is uh, River Bridge, and the, there's a man standing on the right hand side. You've probably not seen him stands in there in the hedge there. Yeah, You've just in the board. That's yeah, but that's what we pick up there because it's. A, do you pay heed to that board, Mike? Oh, that's, you I always pay attention to it. I have two boards, uh, three boards in the track, and I only look at the three boards. Nah, you can trust them. You can trust them, you get the odd yeah. one. I've had the odd one where it's trying to push you on. See, you have caught another rider, so you're obviously, you know, it's... That's something a lot of people don't realise, that you get people sticking boards out that are totally inaccurate, so... Especially in there, you get a lot of them sticking boards out yeah. there. And, you know, you, it's, when you trust... Two boards, That's you obviously correct. know then, you know where you're at. Two or three boards that you can trust are better than 20 that you can't trust. Uh, if you can't really see the camera, you can see the camera's moving a lot, That's because the back wheels. But who's that you're catching, Michael? I think that's Hickman from right, uh, I think. It's a big arse, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe the owner rewind. <laughs> uh, this is into Glen Helen 6, this is, no this is Hillier actually, I can see a bit closer now. Hillier would have started number one or two I think, so that would have left, I'd be 40 seconds up on him now, so. And he was going right there actually, so uh, he's, you would have a fair idea at that stage. You've a fair idea that you're starting to be bent, but he's the biggest part here, like I'm stuck in Glen Helm, oh, very little places to, exactly. move, to, make a, to make a lunge, and yeah. uh, in fairness to him, he's probably riding well, but when you're picking seconds here, there, in other words, you, you get into a rut and stuff behind your hand, and this is our first commentary point, back to second gear, 80 mile an hour, just get it, trying to get it spun up here. What happened is I've overspun here and didn't get the drive yeah. to try and make a lunge up in here. So I've had you to can become untidy actually through impatience. Yeah, I, you can get desperate, you know, ah. to a degree, and that's where you don't want to because that's special TT is you can tell with completely different lines. So he's going to cross over my lane at some point. And I'm going to cross over his, and if he doesn't know why I'm there, obviously yeah. it's uh, it's hot and heavy. I've just got this is Craig Wallage, I think they call this uh, head to the top of um, as a real fast section here, it's just flat out, back one in here, 170 up over a brow and you run it right to the white line on the outside. There's a lot of people just stand, it's hard to say in camera, but I get a shot coming the other way, you can see how quick the bikes are moving and the big bike will start to slide through here, and you flip right, flip left, and there's another indication of going speed to you. 
you might not see it. There's a chopper in there. there. There's a, a chopper just yeah. in front of us there. So he'll be following or looking for the leader coming. That's so exactly right, yeah. Obviously, he's either been following the boys at the front for, for a few miles and then he's realised that yeah. he picked up the pace and now he's, he's going to follow me for TV coverage. So it's the uh, same again, hard spot down here, get to the top of uh, Bagaro. People don't understand how much force it goes through a motorbike down through here. You know, you top here, you hit the fifth, hold fifth to the bottom, back force, you're doing about 140 miles an hour. But we have a shooter bike now, because we're making that much horsepower, that we have deep sumps on them. Uh, and what happens is you can go around there, you break them up with something, yeah. uh, and obviously then that's so you have to watch to a degree down through. So, we're 13 mile out, roughly down into like the 13th, that's where my dad had a big one actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it was maybe the Manx down through here, he lost his ear. So, same again, you hear the, the big bike just spinning there constantly because you're working with 225 horse. It's, for one wheel, it's a lot of work, you know. So. You're past how at this stage, you realise you're all a quick one at that stage. Well, once I hit my next board, which will roughly be probably then the Solby Street or Solby Bridge, oh, yeah. uh, I'll know then I'm picking time, and then obviously then that's I'll start to get a glimmer, a glimmer of people in the distance, and once because I know there's only two more in front of me, and obviously one of them ones I knew was going to be the faster of the two. So yeah. if I could see them, it would make life a whole lot easier. So conscious of the fact that this stage that you're on a quick one. Yeah, yeah. If you can see, I've been using a lot of the road. Uh, we've actually struggled. That was the first big bike race, you can see a lot of movement in the bike which makes a lot of hard work for me and we can see the way the bike's working too much that we could do with suspension changes but yeah. uh, that's not something we can do now so we're, I know by the way I'm riding it that I'm using all of the road and stuff like that. that's 180, 90 mile an hour there and that road's not that thick when you see, you see it here it's wide but when you're, you know it's, it's only a two car road really you know so it's, uh, it's hot and heavy but we're making it down now down to obviously where my father crashed in 94 and we're just heading down to Balak here now which is we're sick here we get a bit of a break now because we can get sort of steadied up and it's a bit flat and bump flat instead of bumpy now so we get a bit of a break and it'll be as hard so over here obviously this is where my dad's wheel snapped down the bump yeah. and then obviously he fell on this left so you can hear them big bike just they've standing. taken the wall away now with your dad I think maybe he took it away <laughs> took the away. they took the left away yeah, I think. <laughs> so, uh, but this is the hard work. This, but it's this is stuff here where it's fast, but you can get a break. And that's two wheels of the road there, doing 180. And this is time where you can relax. You're still flat out, but you've got a wee bit of. It's easier to go down into the quarry where you back the gear and you just. And this is where if you're fast through, you, you'll get a quick speed trap time. Uh, and you'll always see through speed trap. You either the boys are up the front or you know always at the top because you need to get a good drive through. There's a, a series of the left rights there constantly. Until you get onto the obviously Solby Street. This is uh, Solby Street now. This is where they classify the fastest piece of this track. I don't think it is, but. Uh, this what is do you reckon it is? Down to Helbury, no? Just uh, down Ah, that's what uh, you're now always reckoning the same, so there you That's a dumb lock then. Uh, it seems because you're going down hell, but ah, you'll see my next board will be in the left. <coughs> there, it's just there, so I've got P1 there, so obviously I know I'm starting to move now, so obviously yeah. this ginger. Whole section now is where it really gets hard, you know, and it's 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 very technical and it's very bumpy. And as you can see, with it, the dark darkness below the trees, so uh, a lot of wheeling and a whole lot of movement with the bike, obviously, because you're just pushing. Road conditions are good there, mate. I we were lucky this year. We yeah, had, very uh, lucky. The weather, great weather. We every night practice, we, we had all we needed to do. Super. Too much. But same again. We're just nicking sixth here, and we're just right left, right, and it will go another left in the tank, but as you can see how quick it's come, it's, it's obviously you've got a wide screen, obviously in the visor, it's not that uh, big a range for us to see, so we back it down into fourth, coming in, and we head up to what we call Care of War, which is same again, you need to get a real good run through this, because we're getting to Ramsey now, and when I've seen my two boards, I know I've maybe pulled two or three seconds, but I realistically want to pull out another two or three seconds to Ramsey, so it makes it a wee bit more comfortable. So I'll push down through here, and as you can see, same again, moving at the bike, you can tell that the, I'm probably using more of the road than what you would need. Uh, Do you like that section, or is that a section that... Yeah, that's mostly where... You, know, you feel you can make a bit of time? I think boys stand out really, because it's, it's fast, yeah. and there's nowhere to hide through it. You know, there's, TT obviously there's nowhere to hide in it, but if you push and find that fine line, there's, yeah. it's, it's one of the places that's where you can push on. 
part of it's got, I think I got a big slide through here, you can see the rear let go. You ever used it there, by? I've been in there a couple of times, but it's, it's hard because you're carrying that much speed in them big bikes now. I know. The, the lay-by runs out. Obviously, same again, it's Parliament Square. You know, people say, oh, you get in the Parliament Square, it's the worst bit in the track, but it's one of the places you're sort of glad to get in the Parliament Square to get, you know, to get sort of the speed brought down a bit yeah. and realise that it's not all going at that pace. So you know, we're heading up for Rams you now, we'll, we'll get our next checkpoint. Uh, and Roy Murr sits up in there and he, uh, He'll now, he'll now call out a checkpoint just up here, it's one of the stores that turns in the corner of the track. He sits up in there, he, yeah. he'll call that out and then my next man will be two mile up the road here and he will now uh, give me my last board probably of, of, of the lap. So we're heading up to the waterworks, the retard waterworks this year actually. We Your dad had a big golf there one year, do you remember that? No, no. They had at the waterworks. And I, I'll never forget because Chief whenever, Chief Chief whenever Chief. we got to the hospital, he says to me, remember the old big green hedge I used to always require? And he says, well, there's a big two foot stone wall behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, maybe I do, maybe stick it touch two foot. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, chain broke, yeah. Chain broke, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, same with the gooseneck now, uh, and this you know, massive amount of people there. So, it's actually a very dull uh, show, if you can mostly see it. There's the next board there, just. Yes, yeah, seen it. And that's my last board for the home show. Obviously, I know I've started pulling time. And you're also aware, Michael, there's a pit stop at the end of this lap. Yeah. <coughs> you can. People and have done your it. Aye, people have done it, you know. And you get the old boy maybe at the lap, or the, the Craig will put a board out saying, you know, fuel. You know, just, ah, just let everybody know yeah. that it's, it's, it's a lap for fuel. But yeah. This is the biggest problem here because you've set your bike up sort of half middling for bumpy stuff and smoother. So you'll see a lot of rear wheels spin. And a lot of rear wheels spin, obviously. Do you like that mountain section? I, I don't mind it. Obviously, it's, it's, it's some, some people struggle over it because there's not much in it, you know, other than the, the road itself. There's not a lot of. I'm always there, thereabouts, but it always seems to be the short circuit men seem to. Uh, just Ed, because Eddie Laycock told me he always struggled <coughs> up over the mountain <coughs> because there's no furniture, there's no people. Really. I would have sort of. It's a funny old place because you're up here like this is a full. This is called the mountain mile now, and you're doing what 190, 200. And there's nothing, you know, there's no people. You can see the chopper there on the right hand side, there's no yeah. people, there's there's nothing, there's just just holes obviously. It's, it's a funny place to be. Uh, yeah, it's, but it's, it's a part of the game, you have to you can't like one part of the circuit and not like the other because if you know it's, if you have to push that fine line, you know, you need to you need to be happy where you're at. So it's, it's just one of them things. So we head up now towards the veranda, which we're getting I think to the peak of the mountain now, I think we're getting to now. I will head down into another fifth, fifth gear right hander, but it's the same old stuff. It's getting your apex as they just touch the white line and run down into the veranda floor, which is it's a, it's a real though, rare spot. So you want to try and stay out as wide as you can, then come in, come in, come in, because you don't want to apex that one because it's too late, or apex that one, or apex that you want to apex this one. So that's the last one of the four. Uh, uh, that if you apex the first one, you run out of room. It's nearly four and one, isn't it? Uh, you have to go late to. Aye. to this is same again, this is a late apex one because if you run too early you're on wide, if you run too late you're out of road, so it's, it's, it's funny. I've actually Just lost, it right. I lost the front through here on 600 one day and it was supposed to show how hard you push through here with the, with the front brake on because you're trail breaking in over the tram lines, like, trying to get it up from fifth to second. You head up the over drives, same again, it's, you're just pulling all the time, which in bikes is revving to, and that one of mine rest to 14 and a half. You know, it's, it's, it's a 14,500 revs, it's, you know, it's a lot of, lot of pressure on a motor like that being squeaked like that for, yeah. for so long. You know, it does an hour and 45 minutes of that there roughly, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and obviously you're trying to take the last bit out. Some demand on it. Yeah, so, you know, down now ahead for 30 seconds. 30 seconds is the same, you have to try and stay out, stay out. Don't apex there because if not you're running too deep for that one. Yeah. And you get the three of them running the one, so obviously I'm... I know probably something's going on now because once we do this, the camera's basically on top of me, so uh, that's one of the corner, that'll be the glorious place on the yeah. track. Uh, it's another so popular place for boards as well, Michael. Uh, yeah. Aye, they sort of changed it maybe because they've widened it a wee bit, it's not oh, a place to, to stick too quiet. Yeah, as well, but uh, it's the same when you get down through here, you're down in 33rd, you want to apex the first one and run out and then pull it back so you can get that sort of spin up. There's a chopper there, obviously, he's standing yeah. waiting. Same game. It's one of these ones you want to try and get the momentum down because we've got a couple of slow turns here. And if the camera's 
a bit sharper than what it was on TV, which it's not on this, but I can see the boys now come out here down into the crowd. I can see them, so obviously I know then it's, you know, I've, I've done my time. I've, I've started pulling them. And again, I'm probably to the degree maybe a bit lazy now because. Does that take the edge off you when you see them? Would it take that wee bit of edge? You know that <laughs> you go from revving the bike to it's can't take any more to that, right? We've done the work now, it's time to treat it with a bit more respect. Oh, sure. Time to get Actually, I got on four laps in this now yeah. to do on two pit stops. Yeah. This is the fastest section of course here. I agree. I, I think down because you're going down and it's just revving there like mad. Uh, this would be the new Hillbury, the old Hillbury we just close it over in I think the second year, that's now fourth. Uh, and now we're heading down. Same game we're nearly at the end of the lap now, so obviously you're trying to gather up right again. You've been so fast for so long, you've come up into the we're in for same post now, which is same again. It's three right handers, so you want to try and stay out. You don't make it exactly too much, stay out. Stay out again to get the last one. And I can spin over the top of the hill now to, to drift it around and get, get to the apex. See if we can get it slowed up. Basically, I guess it's, you can lose five seconds here by running on and gain a tenth of a second, so it's, you got to be sort of half smooth. And, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Last year I took a toss down in here, it wasn't just down in here and that's right under the trees. And you're still doing a hundred, just fell there. Doing oh, you're still bumper. Doing a hundred and thirty on. So you're going into the nook, which is obviously now, is, as you well know, it's not used. It's, no, uh, that's right. So it's green in here, so you have to be sort of, you're on edge down through here. Oh, aye. And especially Probably the slowest bit of the circuit, or one of them anyway. Well, so you're quite right, one of the most dangerous. It's all, it's green you can lose a race there, Mike. Very much so. And it's, we're stopping now, we'll go into the pits now, I think we're stopping here now, we've got, we have to, we used to stop and this is a stop box here, uh, but you don't have to stop now, you have to, so obviously I see the boys in the pits, so there they all are, so I sort of know roughly where we're at, uh, and then I'll get some feedback from both my mechanics and there to say, look, you've, you've done such and such, or you're, you're at this pace, or you've got that much ahead, and obviously the main point is now you step in the back tire. There's history in the maker. to give them a bigger round of applause than that. <laughs> and again, I'm not biased, but it was a dumb lot done it, so I feel happy about that. What a lap. Do you ever think of opening a pizza delivery business? <laughs> 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 so you need them all himself, probably. Says you need them all himself. Uh, you'll be back from uh, Brown's Hatch. Uh, how do we go in the sidecar? Enjoy it. Yeah, it was good. Sunday was really good to us actually. We finished second, um, fifth overall. Also, they, they run super bikes and 600 cars that you get in F1 and F2 and F1s, 1000cc engine sidecar and F2s, 600cc eyes and F2. Um, and we finished the two races run together, so we finished fifth overall, second in class. And we had the fastest lap of the race, so I think we, I, I crashed in the first lap, we just we had an accident, got onto the start and finished the first lap. Uh, and we got going again, but I think we could have. Definitely because was that at that right hander? I on the front finish. I was, I was down and I just we sort of just got a real good start. Sixteenth in the grid, I think it was out of thirty and going all right. I just I was up into about fourth or fifth, I think it was, and I just came on the right hander and just stick with a big bike, you really have to run through the turns to get the run under the street because they obviously just they just turn and squirt. And I, I just went on too hot, just she just went just turn it into the turn it into the back end, just just broke away from me and sadly the two of us went into the bank but we were lucky enough I was able to keep the momentum going and, and, and get back on track and, and, and then start, you know, picking a pace up again. Something you'll try again? I probably something I'd like to do, obviously it's it's hard when um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, every race motorbikes and sidecars, you know, so I have to be... I heard our lawyer, but they don't have a sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice up the back road, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have a go round, I'd have a go, but... Uh, you might need an angle grinder at the chair, you might have a bit an hour. I was going to say, if they can run them at Scarborough, they can run them anywhere, so... Ah, that was true. So you'll go again? I won't go again, I would like to try and do, get involved in doing some more, but it's like everything, you know, obviously my sort of bikes, the, the be all and end all for me, I have to, you know, my performance to perform at the TT, and that's where I want to be. So what's left for the good year, Michael? Good year all round. Very impressive. Aye, very good. You struggled a bit at the Ulster Grand Prix. Uh, Aye, what happened there? We just I tipped you for every race. You let me down every race. I genuinely, <laughs> uh, I genuinely thought 
I thought I could do it myself in my own mind. We had the package Thursday night. Was it one. you or was it the bank or was it a bit of both? Uh, I think, you know, every, everybody wants to blame their tools, you know what I mean? I'm not going to walk here and say it was the tools because it's not fair to the team that worked hard behind it. Was it tools? Yes, they were into a degree. We, we lost our electronics on, on, on Saturday, so we, we struggled a bit. And um, there's a couple of shots of me going around Dawson Burns with the back wheel of the road. The, club, the shot collapsed in the Superstock bike, so we we were we were just holding in for for dear dear grip. And obviously, there's a couple of shots of me in the, the back wheels of the road, obviously on its side. So just just silly things that it's that be easy to turn around and say on the day it was just that and the other, but it's. It's not fair, you know. I mean, I've, I've had we worked hard, and we we even worked really hard uh, with the six hundred, like really, really hard on the six hundred to get it uh, on on par. And that was it was just something stupid, you know. Nigel, the dyno shot, we worked day and night getting heads ready, and and the bike was awesome. It worked really well at Armoy, and our own stupidity, the, the air temperature on my own fault, the air pressure gauge went down on it. And, Rich in the up, so just just stupid things, but it always seems to be when you're having a good year, you, you, you're pushing for that last bit, and sometimes you can overlook what needs to be done, really. And it was probably the small things that happened was my own fault to the degree, so it was easier blaming me because it's my job. The fact that it was Hutchie that grabbed the headlines that day, did that make it even worse for you after what the wee spat you had at the TP, or was that something? Would you like to have shoved it up? <laughs> Tell the truth. I don't think there's any ministers on those that are proofs. Tell the truth. I found him. I Do I think he's a better writer? No. Uh, do I think he read better? Did I think he was the best writer on the day in the race? No, I didn't. Was it hard to force him out to smile at the end? You know when they're all sticking the mics up to your face? Yeah. You not, know you need to smile, but you said you're. I never smiled any, so it's different. So. <laughs> but it's one of them things, you, you know, I think Bruce, in fairness, bred the best race. Um, I hadn't the power, if I'm honest with you, to stick in there. But I think just the speed of the BM sort of came to it four and, uh, and sort of gathered Bruce up in where he didn't want to make too many passes. Look, I can assure you, he was more sick of the TT than I was at those other Grand Prix. So <laughs> I wasn't that bothered. And it's, it's one of them ones that I saw at the end of the year. Yes, nice to win at the end of the year. The only person, uh, the question I saw here, who won the senior, and that's the long and short of it. And that's just the way it is. And it's the way it is. That is it. And that's the everybody wants. I, I thought to myself, oh, well, you know, people say, oh, you're the best racer in the, in the world, and stuff like that. To a degree, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, when I sat down this year, I wouldn't swap my year for anybody else's, so that, for me, yeah. that just Did you shake hands after? Have you shaked shook hands yet? Or spoken at all? <coughs> not really. We, we, we've had a few issues. Obviously, um, he cried about running the super stock bike uh, in the super, super bike race, but that's his business, not mine. Do I think he ran it? No, I don't. I think he just found an excuse to try and do it. They overboard the 600s. It wasn't fair, but they, they got away with it. I held my hands up in the first 600 race. Uh, I bought an engine out of uh, a team here in Ireland who yeah. who yeah. was supposedly running at the TT, obviously down the yeah. his arm. So we ran out engines, I blew a couple of engines, and I've just bought an engine in good faith. Just to, basically, we worked all night to get it in. Uh, the tablets were changed. That's fair enough. No horsepower out of it. No. They're just a different colour. Uh, I took it in the chin and just said, "That's no problem." You know what I mean? But you know, at the end of the day, I felt that they should have took it in the chin as well. But yeah. what they done? So they've been getting away with that for two years now. So. Uh, that's just the way it is, but I don't need to be his friend, I don't want to be, so there's no difference to me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just always heck of it, you get a good answer. <laughs> That's his problem. Well, well obviously, you're a bit like your Uncle Joe, you're very suited to the TT. I think the TT's made for you, and I think you're made for the TT. Uh, coming home, Ulster Grand Prix, you like that as well? Do you like Armoy? I have to say that. Watch me say that. I think the end of it. is getting crapper with the earrings. I love you know, I love my TT and it. You know what? I love getting home. You know, I love, I love doing the business, even the North West there. Thirteen TT ones. Mm. Uh, you're only twenty seven years of age. Uh, could yeah. you catch Uncle Joseph? Is it something that preys in your mind? 
Would you like a Dunlop to, to take that? If anybody's going to take it, would you like it to be a Dunlop? Obviously, you want to win. You know, I mean, I want, I want one TTs, and that's the long and short of it. You know, 27, 13 under my belt. You know, Joey only started winning TTs last year. You know, I mean, to, to on age, different sort of things. So, um, yeah, look, you know, at the end of the day, I want one races. You know, I, lo I love winning by the top of the North West. I love winning TT and I love coming home and winning around Armoy. You know, Armoy's only up the road for me. It's only it's a great way of in, great track, great people. You know, and that's what I love about it. But obviously, for me, the TT's the, the be all and end all, you know, really. And get the money out, get, get the money out, Bob, because I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> but, you know, the TT, it's, it's nice knowing, you know, I'm the only person ever to break the sub 17. I'm still the only person. I broke it six times, so yeah, that's ten seconds quicker than anybody I think else. not a lot of people realise that, that not only was he the first person to break the sub-17, he didn't do it once, he did it, I think six times. Either, either five or six times, so, which means it wasn't a fluke by no means. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's, that's ten seconds up on the, on, the, on the lap record. Now, ten seconds, you know, people might say, oh, ten seconds, you know, click the stopwatch, ten seconds. It's, it's, not, it's not that long. When you're averaging 133, just say 134 mile an hour, if you click your stopwatch and something goes by 134 mile an hour, you click it 10 seconds later, she'll be brave that up the road, you know, it's, you know she's a, it's a bigger distance, you know, and I know I can go quicker, I know I can go quicker, uh, I know I can ride harder, so, you know, it's nice having that sort of comfort zone and where, where I need to be. It's getting very close to the Ulster Grand Prix, but they always call it the fastest road race oh, in the world, it's within. I'd have broke it. No doubt. Yeah. I, have, I have no problem saying it. I, I broke it coming into the pits. And that's what they market their whole event uh, on as the fastest road race in the world. Uh, <laughs> and this year you nearly, uh, I better watch there's lanes here. <laughs> you nearly uh, we need flipped it up. I know. Uh, but I think they were, they were under a bit of pressure. Oh, themselves. they were crapping themselves because they were doing it back and forth. And that's what they said. All our brand was on the fastest road race in the world. That Mickey boy nearly blew the whole thing out of the water. I think it's a bit weird how close they've actually got to it. Oh, aye, incredible. It was always like 132 was the lap now. That's right. Everybody stole in around the 132, but I've just bought like 134. It's not that terrible. A lot of years ago, I remember your dad and me talking about would we ever see a 125 mile an hour lap with Isle of Man? No, and, and he wasn't too sure we would ever see a 125 lap with a TT. And there you're around now, nearly 134. It's, it's it's madness really, you know. I would say seven years ago, doing hundred and twenty seven you were ah, you, you were, were you were you were you're definitely jumping. I do hundred and twenty seven on my classic bike, it's nineteen eighty four. You know, but it goes to show that you know that's the level, whether it's a track, whether it's a tires, whether it's a machine, you know, I put my classic bike around uh, just about hundred twenty seven this year. That's a, you know, one of them there, that's just goes to show how incredible, how, how fast it's getting and how competitive it's getting really. And what about the North West, Michael? An awful lot of people talk about the chicanes and, and, and have they spoiled the circuit. What's your view on the North West 200? It's Is hard. Mervyn in, no? I was going to say, send the club members in tonight. Uh, <laughs> Either start them on the agreed yet, no? <laughs> it's not here, so go ahead. <laughs> What about the chicanes? A lot of people, you know, it's, they say it's not a proper road race anymore, it's more like a short circuit. You can maybe see they're planned for safety features as well. Would you take any of them out or would you take them all out or would you leave it as it has? It's funny too, at the end of the day, I think, the chicanes, yes, they're put in. Uh, people do cry about them, crying about them, not going to get them changed. You know, we've got to deal with it, that's the way it is. Has it annoyed the circuit a little? Yes, I, I, I do think it's annoyed the circuit. Uh, has it made it less of a road race? Well, when the Shikins weren't in, there was still short circuit. And, you know, it was still, it was, when my dad was wanting to break the in 91, he was coming round and, and right the North West just as hard back then. It was indeed, yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's really done that. It's just muddled it all up a wee bit. I think, in fairness, I think we need to attract or look more further into looking after the spectators more than they, they do the riders, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, we, we come, we've got the event, crying about the chicanes isn't going to help out or cure it. They're there, they're there for a reason, they're not going to take them away. I think we need now to bring the spectators back to, to, to lift the crowd. Yeah, what about next year? Have you anything sorted yet? Are you going to build base? You see if you get on well with Big Stuart, Stuart's a good lad, Stuart Hickam's a light Stuart myself. Hi, uh, he's a... Are you, you're a wee bit like your dad, I think, in that respect, that... You, you need to know who's around you and what they're about. And your own MD racing team, 
with Gary Ryan and Martin Marlowe and all the boys. You know them inside out. They know you. Uh, means a lot, doesn't it? It does. When you have the right people. It makes to be honest, this type of sport, and particularly the Dunlop name, can attract the wrong type of people. Oh, and you know it when they do well, and I know it. Uh, it's important to have people around you that you can trust because it's a sport where you need an awful lot of trust in the people around you. Very much so. And you know, it's when the good days are there. I tell you, when the good days are good, they're, they're fantastic. And every man was dog to the beer tent. You know, how oh, when the days are bad, you know, uh, that's when you ever. That's when you see then. There's only ourselves on there. Really, you're standing in yourself with <laughs> with a rope and a, and a beer. And that's just the way it is. But you know, it's a fine line. They think it's it's. Do you think you'll, does it look like you'll stay there next year? It's funny, I think, well, these, what they're planning to do next year, they're trying to obviously make what's right for them as a decision as what way the team needs to go. Uh, and I just need to make a right decision where I need to go. I've got good people in there. I got on real well with Stuart, Steve, the son. Now, he, it's, it's his job now. He's the, the new boss as such. Stuart's still there, obviously. Stuart's just obviously getting on. And years now, you know, uh, but he still paces the paddock oh, when you're right. out. Oh, I tried yeah. paced at Lothan this year. <laughs> oh, and he's a good old bugger. Like, and it's, uh, like I, this year I stayed with them. Obviously, they helped pull me out the whole last year, and we stayed in. But like, we won the superbike race, and the tears were tripping him. You know, oh, I would and, know that. And it just shows the the bond that people have together. And, like, you know, Martin and Gary as it's well. The they they look good for next year. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably run my own team anyway. I'll build my own 600, I'll build my own stock bike, which we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing. Uh, and it's it's funny, you know, we're outsiders looking in, but people don't understand the amount of work that's done here at home from my own side of the team. You know, I run a 600 on a stock bike, and uh, like I've brought 600 out and stock bikes out, out of my town here and won TTs, and they get dynoed and go <laughs> rain up the road there, the dyno shop. The dino's no bigger than the size of that copy hole coming in. You know, I go over to Nigel's, any machine work we need to undertune it, we go in there and his workshop is. No, it's not state of the art. No, it's no. Uh, you know, it, it really is. You walk in, and I keep saying to you, you know, there's no such thing as a brush in this place, you know what I mean? It really is. You need to well, clean your feet when you come in. I you need to take your shoes out and use his, and then I might make your own. But people don't understand. What we've got here in Ireland, the, the, the people we have here in Ireland, like I go into England, you want to see the state of the art stuff they have. You know what I mean? And you know all they're doing, you know, combing their hair, you know what I mean? That's what they're all fit for. They can come here and realise what us boys go through to, to get bikes on the road and get them competitive. And I enjoy that side of it. I like, you know, having to go and rely on. I've got two or three people to rely on to do jobs like that, and we can, I can use them to get down on them. And soon you want a race, you know. It's, it wasn't money, was it? No. It was talent on and off the track, for uh, the right machine men, it's dino properly, it's we struck things and I genuinely, if I took the people to the two places I go to, they would never believe it. And that's not disrespectful to the two places I go to. That TT won't fight and come out of that. They come out there, they go down there, they get dino, they're running sweet and not. We can get them as good as anybody else, you know what I mean? And there's no big high tech stuff, it's just we work hard and I think the heart plays a lot on how, how victories come. Of course, sponsorship and we better be very remiss as not to mention Roadside, they support you as well, and I'm sure you're very grateful to David and the team at Roadside. Yeah, they're great to me, you know, it's, it's fantastic, it's worth, worth, you know, I've, obviously I, I get my car and stuff like that, and I've never no grief, you know, I can always stop up for a cup of coffee, and David and Ian's been with us now two years, and they're just they're great, great people, I've got on really well with them, you know, and it's it's fantastic having somebody at Roadside giving us a bit of a hand, and. You just show thing about a car, or if I need a car, or I need another car, you know, there's no problem. Just left the phone and he's one to go with me, or if I need something in a van, right? There's never any bother. When when they're yeah, when they're say, when they're so servicing it, do they uh, ever bring up the red diesel in the filter? Right? <laughs> <laughs> there was one there. Uh, one one the box in the last day I had mine. <laughs> <laughs> I spent half an hour comparing to Ian that it was uh, uh, the new Alpha Green must have been bad diesel. <laughs> I think Apple some, red. I think some Apple red. Picture, <laughs> I think someone's seen a picture of me and uh, Vin Vincent Drains. <laughs> Listen, I'm just being told, is that time up? <coughs> All right, I, uh, maybe if we could take a couple of questions from the floor. Uh, Listen, before we even go any further, 
What an open and honest uh, lot of answers from the one and only. Show your appreciation. <laughs> I just was wondering, have you much bother getting anybody to sit behind you in the sidecar? <laughs> uh, well, I was telling him a story up there about what he's telling me, he used to know him. He, he, uh, when he's telling me he was going to do a, a charity thing around Kirkuson in the sidecar, and we were talking to an old boy, Dave Mack, from the Isle of Man, and he was saying, don't ever put the wife in as your passenger. He had her in, and he kept telling her to lie over a bit as if she was in the bed. <laughs> he lie over a bit, now the chair was all over the place one day at a clubman's race in England, and eventually, as soon as the chair went completely out of control when he looked, he saw the grass moving. <laughs> and it was her rolling through the grass. <laughs> and she, she took him and divorced him. And she said, tell the judge that he put the boot to her and tell her to lie over a bit. She shot right out of the car, so go ahead, Michael. Yeah. <clears throat> Same again, I've been quite fortunate that I've, I've fell in with somebody who's uh, a world class sidecar side passenger, which has made my life a whole lot easier. But now, me and Dan's been good mates since um, I started racing. We actually started when I was a newcomer at the Mac Grand Prix, he was, he was second that day, so it's been great. You know, he, he's been good. Nobody else will get in, he seems to get in, but it always, everything seems to be either during pub hours. Or after pub hours where the deal's done right would go and to see him there last weekend we we were at the pub and I said ah, we'll go for the crack yet we'll go we'll go right okay we won and we realized it wasn't the best idea that we've ever come up with and we went and done it and Dan broke his collarbone in, in the car uh, it was the last lap battle and I, I shoved the car into a boy but the, obviously the, the passenger he puts his arm out and to, to obviously grip the, the race wheel and he had his arm out and I shoved his arm into the next man's turn. Uh, so he's broke his collarbone, so I think with the same car it's a bit of a touchy subject whether he'll go back in again, but if we get him drunk again he'll live. I don't think of any bother. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a roving mic here if anybody wants, if you want to raise your hand. Anybody else with a question? Don't be backward. It's Brown hemorrhage. <laughs> yes. That's the governess. It's, it's, no. it's, it's natural. You know where you're at. You know. I mean, you know roughly you know, the bikes. It's like getting up in the. It's like getting up in the middle of the night for a leak. You know what I mean? You, you got to make sure you get into the toilet bowl. Right? You know what I mean? It's the same muscle work right when the wheel comes up. You need to just deal with it there and then. And it's, it's when you're doing 180, it's because the momentum's that fast. It's not. It's actually gliding more than it is going to get. My biggest problem is wheeling at 100, 100 mile an hour because they're just too wicked and aggressive. Where obviously, when you're doing 180 mile an hour, you're at that peak power where it's obviously it's only going to come up. It's not. It's not the beyond end goal really. It's just. It's, it's just like gradual, you know, nice and easy. It's his late grandma used to tell us that to keep the two of them on down there. They're only wasting time with one of them up there. He used to get an eight and any time he was wheeling. Any other questions? <coughs> We've got a roving mic if you need. Yes, here's one over here. Get, get you in a minute. Get you in a minute. Uh, do you not intend to spend much time in the soap bar? What type of what you're doing? Do you enjoy it more? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I would like to, obviously, but obviously we main things sort of like, obviously, and, and, and riding motorbikes to a degree. Uh, I've got a rally car too, which sticks up a lot of my time. Uh, uh, if I'm honest with you, I enjoy driving the, the rally car more to a degree, so I'll probably, whatever we get to do, I'm free from not racing motorbikes, I'm mostly to go out and, uh, and use the rally car, but it's like everyone, you think at the start of the year you've got a full year to get through, and that's sort of just saying there, the year's over now, and I've run out of weekends, and it's just, it happens that quick, but I'd like to, yes, I'd like to try and do a bit more if it's possible. Did you ever come across young Jennings, Michael? Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. I met one night for Nana. He was chatting to me. Hi, he needs a wash and a haircut. Uh, <laughs> not me, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, 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 same game. We've got real talented people in our. I got a new commander there as well. Uh, hi, and the bugger can steer. You know what I mean? Oh, hi. He's that lazy. You know. Uh, you know what I mean? He comes to I know he's a good lad. I got on real well with them boys. And it's, it's funny how the talent we have in this country with the same thing. It's it's mostly financial. I keep saying that. Yes, sir. Uh, Michael, would you ever consider doing BSB or going superbikes? Uh, I would like to do BSB. Same again, it's, it's, it's a financial side of things, obviously. Uh, truthfully, I don't think I'm good enough to go with superbikes. Uh, 
because I took a different route of, of racing motorbikes. I think if I started off on short circuit and stayed short circuit, I, I could probably, to a degree, went on ahead doing that. But because I went road racing, obviously I focused more on doing that more than, than short circuits. And it's a wee bit different now. Obviously, Joey was world champion, I think maybe five years or five times, sorry. Uh, but obviously, that was back when road racing was involved in the world championship at that time. So, was uh, max in them days. I, and to quite honestly, I think. Nay, to the degree I'm, I'm, I'm getting too old for it, really, if I'm honest with you. The, uh, the young boys coming through now, they're, they're 13, 14, 15, you know, and they're riding big bikes and we're level now 18 or 19, really, you know. As we always find, you know, why would you want a fellow from Ireland when they can get somebody from their own county, you know, and as I said, with them Spanish lads now, they're that quite, you know, of the mark, so it's chances of me. Yes, I'll probably do some British Championship, but to go further than that would be a, be a very big ask. Yes? Hang on, perfect weather conditions, perfect bike setup in the zone, perfect party thinking you're going to stop right there next year. Just that's what he was saying, he can go quicker. Yeah. I think, no problem, 35s, no problem, without a doubt, no problem, that's. Just for curiosity, every man for our 10 seconds. Now, I lost probably 7 to 8 seconds coming into the pits with the flying lap, so that was, um, I think that's, I think the lap on it was a 35-1, which is, you know, it's... Well, obviously there's a wee bit as well on the circuit, you know, resurfacing and, and as Michael said, some of the corners are different now, you know, down at Halbury, as you said, used to be a second gear corner at the left hander, it's now a fourth gear corner, so there are wee changes to the circuit, but uh, I think the machinery and, and as Michael said, the... That's a question I was going to ask you, Michael, on, in terms of talent, you know, I thought for, for a couple of years there was like a dearth of talent coming through, uh, now we seem to have pretty, you know, a good selection of young talent. Is there any one of them young lads coming through in particular that you think is a real star in the making? It's, it's hard to say. I think the, the talent at the moment is, without being disrespectful, it's at a level now where it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's not creeping, you know, it, it's hot a level and we don't have any more talent coming through. Well, I don't see any unless somebody comes out in short circuits at the minute. We've, we've sort of hopped like a, uh, for want of a better word, a wall. A wall, yeah. where yeah. you know who's going to be in front. That's, yeah. you know, and you don't see somebody, yeah, I haven't seen anybody this year and said, yeah, yeah, give him another year, he's going to be at the front. And that's not being rude to the boys. Everybody's trying their best, but it's, he's, the boy that's there, for instance, like this year, people moving up to another second off their lap time, which probably not that. I knocked another second off the superbike lap time with the North West, you go to the TT. Well, they maybe went up a mile an hour, well I knocked up maybe two miles an hour, and in the same way you go to Oscar Grand Prix, I've knocked under 34s, and people are getting up under 32, so you're always, you know, unless you're taking, instead of making one small leap, you need to make a big leap to make the, to make the actual jump to get on the back of the big boys, and it's hard at the minute to see, outside of who you obviously can see, uh, Daylight, who's going to come through and make a leap like that? Good answer. Anybody else? Ian? Yes, sorry, here's one here. Can we remember going around Michael Suzuki next year? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's not hard to work out, you know, obviously, because they're bringing the water bike out, obviously, and uh, uh, and so is Honda, uh, so is Kawasaki, so at the end of the day I'm quite fortunate to the degree that I've, uh, I'm lucky enough that you know, everybody to a degree wants me to a degree, so I'm quite fortunate that way without being big headed. I've, obviously with TT and stuff like that, it's been good to me this year, obviously people have been obviously on the phone, right, we've got this coming out, Suzuki is the same, Honda's got a new bike out, Kawasaki's got a new bike, so you know, there's, whether I end up, where I end up, I'm not quite sure yet, obviously I've got, uh, my bike last year was also very good at TT and it's, it's hard sometimes to, to, to look outside that to see something else but at the same time as you know when you made the BMW what it was 
every man their dog's got, it's time to bring something else in to uh, mix it up a little, that's my opinion anyway. Maybe then. Maybe, it's, that, that's another force that has been, has been brought up. The same thing, it's an ongoing package and I always seem to be want something like that and even in Aprilia maybe by some, some, some way or form. So it's, it's hard when it's that sort of thing, you don't know where it is, you know, or where, and it always seems to be, if there's something you can write, everybody seems to want to get me on it for some reason. And it always makes my life a bit harder, but it's, if, if, you write, if it comes to the point where I have to write you write next year, I'll take the train. And I think what we touched on earlier about uh, how content you are within the team you're in and the people around you means an awful, awful lot. Uh, and, and I know he's content where he is at the moment. And to make a change to somebody else, then obviously you run the chance because I know Harkin back again, he, when his father and me would have been managing our soul, to be honest, we get involved. In <laughs> and it's not all about, you know, sometimes paperwork looks great, people look good at the first initial meeting or two, and then when you really get to know them, they don't stand to know them. And, and it's too dangerous a sport to be involved with people that are there for the wrong reasons. So I can fully understand why he likes to be where he is. Sometimes when you're when you're content, you're fast. Um, when you're discontent, he had a bad experience with the the Milwaukee Yamaha team. That's just an example of how wrong you can be at times. Looks good in paper, looks good to everybody out in the public domain, but when you put it to the test, sometimes people are found one. And he's a winner, obviously, and and, and I feel that he needs to know the people around him are are, are winners as well. A nice creep card, and no, it's not. Uh, so that's um, well, I think we're we can chat all night, couldn't we? Uh, such a good lab to have up because all his answers are totally open and honest as usual, and not one swear word yet. But listen, I believe you don't. Uh, I believe you don't. I gather you don't believe in magic. Well, maybe that changed ever so slightly when we're up there at a cup of tea. But I'm going to put you to the test because, as I told you earlier on. We have without doubt the best road racer this country has at the minute sitting here tonight. And I think we have the best magician here that this country has as well. Tell you something, he's the best I've ever seen. He made us some money up the stairs there, Mike. <laughs> so uh, would you please show your appreciation for somebody who's going to come on and prove to Michael that there is such a thing as magic. Please show your appreciation for Rod Hall. Now feast your eyes carefully. Can you ask him how they're doing for me? They didn't answer me. How are you doing, folks? Listen, show Rod and he's trying to get out of Everyone around the applause of this. How are you doing? It's been out of way. Can everybody do this for me? Can you put your hands out? I guess. That wasn't good. Can you put your hands back to back and put your right hand up a bit and go across and clasp your left hand really tight? You're doing it the wrong way around, missus. What are you doing? <laughs> is that you or me? Nobody? Can you, is your thumbs pointing towards the ground? Yes. Can you do that with your small fingers? Can you do it? And watch really closely. If you'd watched me correctly and hadn't let me deceive you there, you should all be able to do this now. Watch. But you did. You're picking a bike and you were there. I didn't say anything, no. You're not going to get it, are you? No. You can give up, Ralph. You're not going to get it. Was that an important call, was it? No. It doesn't like eye contact that much. Tell me, do you play cards? For money, yeah. Does anyone out there play money? For money? <laughs> you know him? You take that from him. Do you have a favourite card? Before we go any further, you can see they are all different. Three hearts. It's in your pocket. It's not here then. Do you have a second favourite card? No. If I told you what it was that with asking you just one question, that would be amazing. What's your second favourite card? That was the question. Never worry. Thank you, there's lots here tonight, isn't it? Can you scribble your name on there for me? Big and bold. Would you just leave? 
<laughs> Second show. Can you all see that? No. On the ears of fans. Anyone who cares, can you see it? Yeah. It's not coming off. I want you to just open your mouth a little bit and just bite down there. There's no way I could add that card well without you knowing about it, sure there's not. Do you have a favourite card then? Conversations going really good tonight. <laughs> Say again. Don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> Liam's been there, haven't you, Liam? You yeah. rebel. <laughs> You're sweating. <laughs> you are. It's my card, four of clubs with mine on it. I think yours was Ace of Diamonds. Watch carefully. You watch. You put mine in my mouth. You're not going to get my dribble, no. That's yes, my dribble. What's here? You put the deck on there. What's here? Eight of diamonds. Did you see what happened there? <laughs> you boys in a trance. <laughs> Did you feel anything happen? No. You didn't feel it, because I know your, you just call me Jesus Christ, by the way. Well, I now have your card. Which means you don't have your card, man. Which means you have my card. <laughs> full name terms are... Full name. Have you ever been the victim of a pickpocket before? Yes, you. <laughs> Little does he know. Have you ever been pickpocketed before? You have? I'm a bit close to you, but we'll try this. And after we do this, I need about seven people to help me out. So you're checking everything's out. See your phone there. Check your wallet. Oh, no, I just want to know where you keep it. I'll get it in the way out. <laughs> you paid cards before, I'm sure you have. Yep. Can you, are you right or left hand up? Right. Okay, give me your left hand. And just, it's not a, a card trick as such. Can somebody answer that? <laughs> just from the top of the pack, just count 10 cards into my hand with the other hand. Slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Just hold the pack there of a box here. Can you make sure the box is empty? Yep. Take the cards and put the cards into the box <coughs> and then put the box somewhere where I can't get it. <coughs> I could get it in there, you know. I could. <coughs> we'll do the same for you. I'll count them slowly for you so you can jag it on. But we'll do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are you right or left handed? You sure? Good. Put them somewhere where I can't get them. <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> he was my assistant tonight. I'm the super <laughs> So what we're going to try and do is try and... You've got ten each, we're going to try and get three cars from here. Somehow. Somehow from there, into there, and get them under there is the easy bit. Get them out there is the hard bit. And I'm going to do it without touching you. I won't, you won't feel a thing, trust me. If any, any of you, sorry. I'm doing the jokes. It was good though. What's your name? Where are you from? He doesn't look like he's from Dungan. You're not. You're not local then. Is there any Polish people in here tonight? It's him that offended you, not me. I don't remember you even in the script so much then when I was the first time. That's good. Three cards from here, Michael. To be honest, did you feel anything? Were you nervous there? <laughs> a little bit. No. Could have been a wee bit nervous. 
I'm not going to touch you. But did you feel that? <coughs> this time I'm going to be. I'm just going. Did anyone see that one come out? <coughs> one person. Did you feel it that time? No? Did you feel it? No. Nothing. You had 10 cars in there. You know, I have eight. Did you feel that one come out? You don't have to lie to make me look good. Did you feel that? <laughs> you did? You? Okay, okay. Did you feel that then? No. Did anyone see anything on toward anything happen in this area? Anyone? If you did, just put your hand up. You're not going to put up because you can't even see. <laughs> I'll take it that was a no. Usually I go and get the cars, but can you bring the cars here to stand? And just put them on my hand. <laughs> they're roosting so they're just pick them back, pick them back. And just one at a time, count them onto my hand. One, three, five, six. Seven. Now I know what you're dying, dying to do. You're doing it already. No, no, no. You want to go back in there and see if there's a few more cars? <laughs> Am I right? Do you want to just check? Uh, you know where the field. I know where. There's seven cars there. I think there's a dot down there. Uh, a pheasant. Sorry, it's supposed to be a family show, but can you bring out your box? You just take the cars out of the box now. Make sure the box is empty. And just you count that out. Make something like one at a time. Three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cars. <laughs> See, I think every single person missed that. The reason for doing that, and um, I didn't mention that was a pickpocket at the start. That was a pickpocket and exercise. That's how pickpockets work. They distract you. <laughs> and under the distraction of doing that card trick, I somehow managed to get your phone in. <laughs> <laughs> Is that awesome? You want something on eBay? Then. <laughs> You, you can have that, that I will get your wallet before you leave. Can you, I need five people. It's your phone, I know. How many times have I stole it now? You still owe me 20 pounds, by the way. I need five volunteers. If you don't volunteer, Liam will pick five people. I also need Ian Lamont and Cara Barnes as well. As soon as you come this way, they'll clap you, and I promise. And, and so much. Here's the young fellow. And he's the man. If you need a used car, just come on in. He'll get you stitched up. Sorry, fixed up. That's the man. Um, Carla, where's Carla this, this man here, what's your name? Are you familiar with Patty Carks? Come on, Carla. So, you just stand here. Come on, the Dungannon. The Polish man. Aye, the Dungannon. Come on, yes. come on. Yeah. Come on. And you be the and you be the Mickey Mouse ball. Come on, come on, man. come on, come on ahead, come on. Can you leave your phone out there? <laughs> How many more do we need? Um, five. Another one. Have we volunteered? Yes, come on, darling. Got one here. Sorry. Right. Nobody clapped for you coming on there. <laughs> Give that man a round of applause there. <laughs> All right, can you come the side, And I'm going to use you in a second. You look really nervous. Don't be nervous. You don't need to be nervous. Um, what's your name? If you just want to just go around that way and come you this way, damn so everyone can see, because you're put your backs to that audience. So come you this way. Just like a train. Keep going around so you. Okay. Perfect. What's your name? Angus. Where are you from, Angus? Just go back a wee bit. What's your name? 
Danielle, where are you from? Okay. Where? Where's that? Where's he from? Oh, right. Is that your, is that your dad? No, not quite. Um, hands up if you've ever seen a magician before. Hands up if you didn't. I've never seen a magician before. Three quarters of people in here didn't understand that question. <laughs> we will use, I want you, can you just think of a random piece of information? I'm going to give you a pen picker. I want you to write a random piece of information down there. Actually, no, if you write it down, you might think somehow I peek it. Can you think of a random piece of information? Yes? Good. I'm going to come back to you. Are you familiar with a pack of cards? No, no, that's a no. Tonight is not the, the reason. Most. That was subtle. Most people, if you ever go and see a magician, they will get one person to pick a card. The magician will shuffle the cards. The card will go back in and the magician will find it. I'm not going to do that. Angus, can you shuffle those? Danielle, can you shuffle those? Don't drop them. Have you played cards before? You're not really enjoying this, are you? Yeah, I'm just pretending not to enjoy it. Can you shuffle those? And can you shuffle those? Can we a really good mix? Do you use two, two people know each other? No. Put your hands out. Making me nervous. Keep shuffling. So you can all see that they were really been shuffled. Can you just pass those to that guy there? Let him shuffle them? You done that? <laughs> Past few years there. Keep shuffling, Angus. Don't get distracted. Daniel, can you take his cards <coughs> and shuffle yours into his? <coughs> Keep shuffling. For I was told to do 25 minutes, I'm just coming time here. <laughs> Pass the man. I'm off my glory. Can you shuffle? <coughs> oh, you can't shuffle the dead, sorry. Happy enough? And again. There's no one who can say any here now that those cards are not well shuffled. Not even you. Not even you. You want to shuffle them? If you want to. You don't really care, do you? <laughs> What's your occupation? No. No? Like your style? You could have, um, had any cards there? Each of you could have had any cards. Are you familiar with a card yet? Just take one. Take one. Take one. And it's at five. Alright, we'll try this. You're thinking of a random piece of information in your mind, yes? You are world famous. We were chatting with us upstairs, weren't we, about famous faces and stuff. Can you think of a famous face in your mind? Just get a famous face in your mind. Hi, one of you are thinking of upstairs. And can you just pass me that wee pad there, Liam, please? There's also two books sitting there, isn't there? Yep. Ian Amon, just choose, choose one. Take, take a look at both of them. Okay, Hill, you want that one? I want you, the way if I pull this off, this will be the best thing I've ever done. It's quite a lot of procedure for very little effort at the end, but trust me, it'll probably be worth it. Open up that book to any, any page you like. First of all, how many pages is in the book? 300. And I would say about 200 words per page. You go 10 words across. Yeah. And 20 lines. What's 300 times 200, Carl? <laughs> Both of them are wrong. 200 times 300. the pressure you're over, by the way. There's a lot of words in that book, isn't there? Can you think of any words? Just, just flick through to any page. Don't, don't let me see. And just look at either page and just look at any word on any page. Make it a long word. Make it a... Any two pages. Any two pages. But then pick one left or right and then look at word on either page. Just pick a word. Make it a long one. Make it challenging. Have you got one? Yeah. Good. At least seven letters long? Yes? Go ahead. Close the book. Keep the word in your mind. You're thinking of a piece of information that no one can know. You're thinking of a word on a... a a book that there's 60,000 words. 
and you're all thinking of playing cards and you're thinking of a celebrity and you're just up here for the crack. <laughs> <laughs> just the five people who have got cards, think of your cards right now. If you recap this now, each and every end of one of you has to shuffle the pack yourselves and shuffle it into the other's pack and then you get a random card. Are you all familiar with your own card? Yes? Okay, just keep it away from me and just think of the colour of your card. The colour. The colour? Yes. Is it my accent? It must be my accent. Where are you from? That was my accent. <laughs> think of the colour of your card. I'm seeing three reds and two blacks. If you have a red card, take two steps forward. I'm seeing three reds. The last time I did that, they clapped. But anyway, no, I don't want to clap. No, no. So I mean, the three reds and the two blacks. Out of the reds, I'm seeing. One picture card and two number cards. If you've got a picture card, take one step forward. You had to think about that there. <laughs> you did, didn't you? And you were thinking of a word. Think of the letters in your word. Jumble them up. Go back. There's an E in there, isn't there? In fact, there's two E's in there. And between the... Bet I'm right? Between the two E's, there's a U? No, there's a V. And this is one word from 60,000. If I name your card, you want to go and sit down. Four diamonds, six of diamonds, if that's your card, just one. Speed. If I'm right, take two steps forward. <laughs> Where's somebody right? Like, Who's back? Who's back? <laughs> They're both very similar. Both fives. Five of clubs, five of spades. Five of clubs, five of spades. <laughs> and you're, how's it done? You asked Carla or this guy? Uh -huh. They don't know. You're thinking of a word. There's an L in your word. Not at the start, at the end. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, don't hold it against me. Out of the 60,000 words, what word are you thinking of? That's what I got you. You're thinking of a, your passcode for your phone. It's a long one, six digits. 
Most people have a four-digit passcode, but the car has a six-digit passcode. You know, they don't trust people that you work with. <laughs> Jumble the numbers up now. Six digits is quite hard to get. Usually I go for four. Jumble them, the digits up. Keep jumbling. There's a three in there, isn't there? There's more than one three. Do you mind if I reveal your pin code to all these people, do you? <laughs> you could change well, it. I'll change it, I'll have to change it, right? You could change it. There's also, a, there's not an 8. Just count out now, 1 to 9. There's no zeros. Count out 1 to 9, out loud for everyone to hear. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Stop, there's a 4 in there. Yep. And a 7. And a nine. There's no way I could know your pin number. No. There's no way. Now, you will have to change this afterwards. I'm going to show everyone this. And can you just call out your pin number now? Three, two, nine, three, four, seven. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's the passcode. The car is one. Do you know where your phone is right now? <laughs> Do you want to bet? <laughs> you can go back. Give her a round of applause for you. So you're thinking of a, a famous face. So you just want to have a seat now and understand what he says you. Aye, uh, thanks for your help there. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, you want to stay close, you can watch us closely. Um, what time do you get up in the morning usually? Six. And you got, you get up at six, don't you? Yep. Can you think of this person's the face now? You've got this person in your mind. Think of whether the person is alive or dead. Do you know who he's thinking of now? Yep. You do? Are you a mind reader as well? <laughs> Think of whether he's alive or dead, or she is alive or dead. Are you not sure? Are you not sure? I don't know quick. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But if he walked in there now, you would know him. Yeah. It's not being Beckett, is it? <laughs> Do you want to just whisper who you're thinking of to Liam? And I won't listen? Or lip read? No? No. Is he could be on a man? Okay, think of this person now, Michael. Think of he, if it's a, a male or a female. You're not thinking of that, Michael. You're thinking of the previous card trick. Would you think, <laughs> would you think of whether he's a, a male or, a, or a, she's a female? Can you do that right now? I think I'm going to go for male. This is what I used to do in school. Right, okay, right. we'll see. Think of this person now, this person. I'm going for a life, I'm going for meal. Think of where they're from, um, think of the country um, or, or the western or eastern. Somebody just answered from the crowd there. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, again, there's no way I can know who you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. you're not there. Just tied it up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> do you have wallpaper in your house? Yeah. Do you do it yourself? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little freaked out, so This person. This person, is this person, you look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> this person, think of the occupation, think of what they're famous for. You think of that now? I'm a, I'm a bit lost here. Tell everyone, what are they famous for? Smoking <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I know, I've had, I've had easier crowds. <laughs> so it's not Ian Paisley then, I think. No, close. Close. <laughs> Who are you thinking of? Who are you thinking of? Tell me. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Smoking dope, Bob Marley. Do you like it? Is it? I don't know why you thought I'm. That's exactly what I got. Thanks for clapping on your own there, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> that is Bob Marley. There's a souvenir for you. Don't be smoking that when you go home now. Sure, we appreciate it. Absolute class. Listen, don't move please because I uh, just want to say a couple of thanks to the people from the Northern Regional College who are doing all the video. They did the corporate video and the recording tonight as well. The students. Big, big thanks to them, I think. Also, uh, big thanks to you for coming. Big thanks to David, obviously, and the team. And I'm going to now call up to wrap proceedings up. Great night. What about this guy beside me in the left? Sometimes we take them for granted. Let's never take them for granted, please. And now I'll call up the man who will definitely stick, or sorry, fix you up. <laughs> if you need a used car, this is the man. Big welcome for Ian Lamont. Sort of look forward to every year, Michael makes me sweat for 48 hours when I just go to turn up or not. Um, as of half six this evening, he still doesn't take my calls, but anyway. Um, again, thanks, thanks to Michael, Liam, everybody, the staff that helped get it put by today, Rod. Um, we get to see Rob probably more than most people do. Um, it's still magical and suspense every time it comes down. Truffle, don't want me to know how he does it. It's great how he does it. But thanks again. Um, if you would, if you can get the chance, we just go home right as we review a piece for what you thought of tonight. We need to know whether we keep it going, throw on it, um, and organise it again for next year. Thanks. Don't forget, there's music coming on now. Uh, Fragment, the very good group. Hilary's husband's leader of the band, they're coming on now, so just uh, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, speak to some of the staff if you want, maybe see Michael before he shoots off, if you want a quick picture or something signed, he's here now, enjoy the rest of the evening, thanks very much. <laughs>